Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the top three tips and tricks that I use for prompt engineering. So I've been a professional AI engineer for several years now and over the course of those years, the tools have continued to get better and better and there's three specific things that I wanna to share today that have become increasingly um, in, they, they've affected my output and my productivity a lot. So I want to share them so that you can look at these three things and some of them are pretty basic, but they're so important that if you're not doing even just one of these, then you're going to get a lot out of this video. So if you um, haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right. So the first tip is to stop typing your prompts. And I'm gonna show you why. So right over here, I have monkey type pulled up and we're gonna do a 15 second typing test. I type very fast. So I just wanna show you guys what my typing speed is just so you can have a little bit more context. So, uh, so then up, think, govern, another, hold, any person, take, here, problem, word, after, take, child, have, school, but the set, give, mean, call, also, want, much, all right, so my words per minute is 108 with 97% accuracy. And um, that's pretty fast. You guys can try the monkey type test yourself, monkeytype.com. And uh, that's relatively fast. I think that they say that anything over 60 words per minute is uh, basically in the category of a fast typer. So I would say that I'm pretty good at typing. And with that being said, I would say that I only type about 10% of the time now. And the reason for that is because this tool, Whisper Flow, has become so good that it has completely changed my workflow as an AI engineer. So look over here in the stats, and we're just gonna drag this over here. So 164 words per minute is how much that I'm able to speak so I speak at 164 words per minute, and I type at 108 words per minute, which means that by speaking, I end up actually getting about a 50% to 60% increase in my speed. And if you're a faster talker than you are a typer, like some people, they only type at like 50 words per minute. So, but then they would speak at like 150. So my point with that is that you should do a typing test and then see with Whisper Flow, you know, how fast the difference, how much the difference is so that you can hopefully switch over because in the modern age of AI, you don't want to be slowed down by how fast you type. You want to be able to build at the speed of thought, at the speed of your speech. So with that being said, you know, let's try it out. I'm going to show you guys how it works. So down here at the center, you can see that it says click to start dictating, but I actually don't have to click this. I have it set up with Whisper Flow on your keyboard. You can click the FN key and if you hold it down, watch this, it will start, it'll, hello there Whisper Flow, what's up? So you can see it dictates. Um, but you have to click into an input box and then, um, for example, um, take a look at the courses page on the website. Right now it's using uh, placeholder data and um, what I, um, so I wanna show you guys something cool. So what Whisperflow also does is it removes any ums or anything that's just like a filler word from your from your speech. So you can see that I, I purposely said um a couple times and there are no ums in, in the output here that we are entering into our prompt with cursor. So if we go to courses, we can see here that there are AI programming courses on bridgemind.ai. And right now we actually have the code base pulled up for Bridgemind AI. And we're gonna build a feature and we're gonna build it using Whisper Flow because I wanna show you guys how this works. And I also wanna show you the next tip and trick that I use. And the next tip and trick that I use is to make sure that whenever you're working on a complex feature or a complex project, whether it could be programming, whether it's, um, whether it's a business project, whether it's Excel, whatever it is, you always wanna give the AI 
more context than it even needs. You need to make sure that it understands what you're looking at. Um, you know, you essentially want to be one with whatever AI you're working on because, you know, I look at this, right? I look at it and I can see what page it's on. I can see what it looks like. I have thoughts and opinions about what I want to change. I can see everything, right? Well, the AI can't if you just prompt it. What it's going to have to do is the AI is going to have to spend tokens grepping the code base to find what page you're talking about. It's going to have to kind of take more time to look at the styling to see how everything's laid out. But if you pass in reference images, if you pass in as much context as possible, like different files or um, whatever you're working on, just pass in as much context as you would need as a human being to be able to update the project or to complete the task that you're working on. So that's tip number two. And we're going to do an example of this. So Let's pull up our local host um, and go over to the courses page at BridgeMind. So right now, this is actually out of date. This is using um, placeholder data. So right now we have you know a full stack solution at BridgeMind for taking courses to learn how to use AI. But this page on the website, because we are just now launching, this page has not been updated to actually show the course catalog. This is outdated. So we need to First off, we're gonna copy and paste what we're looking at here. I'm gonna remove this prompt since I was just using it as, as an example. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Whisper Flow and I'm gonna say the following. I'm just gonna give it all, I'm gonna just stream. I would, you know, this tip, I would, I would label it stream consciousness. Stream how you are thinking exactly to the AI. And what's interesting is that this works hand in hand with uh, Whisper Flow because I wouldn't be able to stream my thoughts out in typing as well as I would if I was just talking it. So, you know, let's do that. So, uh, take a look at the courses page. Right now, you can see that the course categories and all of the uh, courses that are listed are all just placeholders. And they aren't actually reflective of the courses that are in the database. So, I need you to take a look at the, um, the Learn dashboard to see how the learn dashboard is fetching courses and rendering them in as course cards. And I then need you to update the course page on the home page of the website so that it actually fetches courses from the database and lists them here so that instead of looking at placeholder hard coded example courses that actual courses are being fetched from the database. Um, so yeah, so Whisperflow thinks and here is my prompt. You can see it's a decent amount of context. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide um, everything that it needs. So we're gonna look and I think it's the course page. So it is, I just did course. Let's do course.tsx because it's that TSX file. Mm. All right, we're gonna drag and drop. This is a really big code base. So we have to go to course. Uh, pages, courses, and then it's this index. Okay, yeah, it's the index. So I'm gonna pass in that file. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna pass in the course card file that I referenced, which is right here. And then I'm gonna pass in the actual browse page because the browse page is what has the reference to the API endpoint that it needs. And this should be good enough to submit. And uh, I'm going to speed this up, but let's just uh, sit back and see what happens over here on the right.
All right, so it just made the update and I can see that this is now correct. It's rendering in the actual courses from the database and it's rendering them in the course cards. So it hit exactly what we needed uh, spot on. It made no mistakes and it was able to accomplish exactly what we needed it to accomplish. So this is great. So now let's talk about the third tip and the third tip is going to be model selection. And I wanna tell you guys a little bit about my perspective on model selection and how I approach it. So over here in cursor, or um, let's just I mean, pull up ChatGPT as well, um, cause I wanna talk about some of the model selections that we have now uh, in 2025. So over here in cursor, let's look down here. We have models from Anthropic, from OpenAI, from, uh, uh, from uh, XAI, we have so many different models to choose from. And in today's world, it's getting more and more important and more of a skill in your workflow to actually understand when to switch models, when to reset context, when to change things over and try a different model from a different company that may be able to succeed in that task. And I wanna to explain to you guys um, some of the main, main things that I implement. So when you're having a conversation with Cursor or ChatGPT, um, wherever you're working, you need to be mindful of your conversation that you're having and the conversation length and which model you're using. So let's say, you know, we just built this course feature, right? So we built in this conversation here, just throughout this video, we have worked on, in this conversation, we worked on the pricing page that was off, off screen, but uh, we worked on the pricing page and then we worked on the courses page and you have to think about what the history of your conversation actually looks like. So if I'm over in ChatGPT and I have a conversation with, about, with it about, let's just, you know, say something random um, about how React is going to help me, you know, be able to build the best website ever, right? Well, then if I ask it, hey, what's the best framework to use for building a website in 2025? You know what it's going to say? It's going to say React. And that's a nuance that you need to understand that, you know, you need to understand the context of the conversation. You need to understand the history of the conversation. And you need to understand when is the right moment to be able to click new chat or new tab with cursor. You have to understand when you need to start fresh and you don't want to be coming at a single conversation with too many different ideas and too much code because it's gonna lead to more hallucinations, it's gonna lead to less productivity and less success. Because it's a long conversation, the AI actually, um, when you prompt it initially, it's summarizing the history of the conversation. So it's going to slow down your conversation. So you need to understand when to start new. You need to understand when to switch the prompt, when to switch the model. Um, and, and those things are very, very important. So for example, you guys can see here that up in my cursor tab, if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see better, you know, I have one, two, three, four, five different conversations that I'm having with Cursor right now. With this one, it's remove unprofessional text from the pricing page. This one was running an NPM install. This one was fixing the seven day free trial issue. This one, so, you know, my point with that is that many times if I'm working on a new issue um, and I know that the existing task that I'm working on has not yet necessarily completed, I will not use the same chat to work on that. I want a fresh perspective. I want a fresh conversation. I want potentially a new model. Maybe I don't want a GPT-5 model on a styling, uh, a styling part of my project. Maybe I want to use a Claude model because Claude is inherently known to do styling better, especially with uh, different packages like Tailwind, for example. Claude is better at styling with Tailwind. So why would I use GPT-5 in styling when I can use Claude. You would rather use Claude for styling because Claude is better at styling. And I don't know if anybody would disagree with that. So my, my, the, my biggest thing that I implement is I understand when do I switch my conversation? When do I start fresh? 
when should I not submit a prompt into an existing conversation because it's going to confuse it? And when do I change the model because some models are better at some tasks than others? So just to summarize, the first tip and trick that you need to be using is you need to be using Whisperflow in 2025, especially if you're vibe coding. You need to be using a text-to-speech. And the biggest reasons for text-to-speech, you're gonna be able to prompt way faster. And then it goes hand in hand with our second tip, which is to stream your consciousness. You as a human being are inherently intelligent, I hope. And the AI needs to understand what you're thinking, how you're feeling, what you want it to do. And you can't stream your consciousness as well to an AI if you're having to type. It's not, it's not as um, authentic. So by switching to Whisper Flow, you both speed up your prompt and you speed up your workflow and you're able to then hit that second tip, which is to stream your consciousness. When you're, when you're prompting, you just want yourself to come out to the AI. So that's the second tip. And then the third tip, yeah, is to, to, to be able to understand the context of the conversation, to know, hey, I need to start a new chat because it's gonna get confused if I throw in some random question about you know this part of the code base when it hasn't even been working on that part of the code base up to that conversation. And understanding that, hey, your chats, your conversations are gonna slow down if you don't start a fresh conversation. Like if your conversation's getting too long, it's gonna slow down. And you need to know when, which models to use for which, um, for, for which uh, task that you're doing. So this mostly goes hand in hand for vibe coding. I would say as a vibe coder, those are definitely the top three tips and tricks. But if, if you were doing anything else, if you were working on a business task or a marketing task, it doesn't matter. Those, these tips, apply across the board when you're AI engineering. And um, that's gonna wrap this video up. Um, I hope that this is helpful. And I just wanted to share a very raw, authentic video with you guys so that you understand the top three tips and tricks that I'm using as an AI engineer in 2025. So thanks for watching. And again, if you haven't already subscribed and turned on post notifications, make sure you do so. We're working on several really exciting projects right now. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.